Do you think you know Blade Runner? Well, here's 15 things you may not have known about Rick Deckard, Replicant Hunter. Blade Runner is an adaptation of Philip K. Dick's novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? There was interest in adapting it soon after it was published in 1968. Martin Scorsese expressed interest, but never optioned it. A screenplay written by Hampton Fancher was optioned in 1977. Before being hired to direct, Ridley Scott was working on an adaptation of Dune, but left the project, seeking a faster-paced project to help take his mind off the recent death of his brother. During pre-production, the film had several titles, including Android, Mechanismo, and Dangerous Days. Fancher suggested the title Blade Runner, the term used in the script to describe the special agents who hunt down and retire replicants. There was another book and screenplay with the title Blade Runner, so the filmmakers had to purchase the rights to use the title. Screenwriter Hampton Fancher pictured Robert Meacham as Deckard and wrote the character's dialogue with him in mind. Dustin Hoffman was in talks to play Deckard, but eventually departed due to creative differences. According to production documents, Gene Hackman, Sean Connery, Jack Nicholson, Paul Newman, Clint Eastwood, Tommy Lee Jones, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Al Pacino, and Burt Reynolds were all considered. Blondie lead singer Debbie Harry was offered the role of Pris, but had to turn down the role because her record company didn't want her to take time off to film. Ridley Scott has this photo framed in his house. Edward James almost created the fictional city-speak language. It's a mix between Japanese, Spanish, German, Hungarian, Chinese, and French. In Hungarian, this means horse stick. No way, you are the blade, Blade Runner. He say you Blade Runner. Tell him I'm eating. In an early version of the script, Roy crushes Tyrell's head only to reveal that Tyrell was a replicant while the real Tyrell was in cryogenic suspension. Rugger Hauer wrote this. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. There are seven different versions of the film that have been screened over the years. The work print version screened for test audiences in Denver and Dallas with a different title sequence. The U.S. theatrical version, also known as the original version or the domestic cut, included a happy ending and voiceovers that the studios requested when the film didn't test well. A San Diego sneak preview was shown only once in 1982. It was identical to the theatrical version, but had three scenes never seen before or since. The international cut, also known as the Criterion Edition or uncut version, had more violent action scenes. The U.S. broadcast version was the theatrical version with toned down violence, profanity, and nudity to meet broadcasting standards. Also, the opening sequence is read by an anonymous voiceover, not Harrison Ford. The Ridley Scott approved director's cut was released when an unauthorized work print version was screened theatrically. There were many changes made to the theatrical cut, all supervised by Ridley Scott, including the removal of Harrison Ford's voiceover, a dream sequence with a unicorn, and the removal of the studio happy ending. Ridley Scott released his final cut for the 25th anniversary of the film. It's the only version of the film that Ridley Scott had complete control over and even reshot some sequences. There was a long-standing rumor that Harrison Ford intentionally performed the voiceover narration for the theatrical cut poorly in protest of it being used. I didn't know how long we'd have together. Who does? He recently debunked this stating, quote, I delivered it to the best of my abilities and that it was simply bad narration. The exterior of Deckard's apartment is a real building called the Ennis House and was designed by famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. The interiors, however, were shot on a soundstage at Warner Brothers. In 1993, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Blade Runner is supposedly cursed. All of the companies whose logos appear in the film suffered financial setbacks after the film's release. And here's a bonus one. The original prop of Deckard's LAPD 2019 blaster was sold at an auction in 2009 for $270,000. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Movies. Make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.